What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we are going to dive back in to the glass node on-chain analysis. Week after week, they put out these wonderful summaries. This is week 22, 2022. Before we get into that, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you have not already. Please feel free to leave a comment. My one request is to please be civil in your discourse. You feel free to politely disagree with me. Just show me your intelligence with how much you disagree. All right. Otherwise, you know, monkey like comments will probably just get deleted. So you'll be wasting your time. Please also follow me over on Odyssey where you can actually earn by watching videos. Who would have thought you're wasting your time here on YouTube so much. You can go right over to Odyssey and the link is down in the description and Twitch, which you can also earn from. It's a, like a fork of Twitter running on the Bitcoin SV blockchain. And also follow me on Twitter. All of my Twitches get relayed right over to Twitter. Let's get into it. All right. Titled. Harden hodlers double down. In the aftermath of the sell-off in early May, a noteworthy shift in accumulation trends is underway. The Bitcoin hodler class remain the only ones left. However, their accumulation behavior signals a doubling down as prices correct below 30K. Bitcoin prices continue to consolidate this week after initial signs of potential decoupling between digital asset markets and traditional equity markets. Albeit in the wrong direction, the S&P 500 index rallied 7.4% from the lows this week and the Nasdaq was up 9.6%. Meanwhile, Bitcoin traded down to a low of 28,261 and only rallied early on Monday to recover a weekly high of 30,710. Ethereum also had a tough week, shedding 17.8% of its value to a low of $1,700 before rebounding to $1,900 on Monday morning. After the Luna-motivated sell-off event earlier in the month, there has been a distinct behavioral change in Bitcoin on-chain accumulation trends. In particular, entities with balances of less than 100 BTC and those with greater 10,000 BTC have been significant accumulators. The remaining wallet cohorts have also transitioned from net distributors to neutral. This reflects a notable shift in behavior compared to the February mid-May period, which was intermittent accumulation and distribution, reflecting uncertainty and rotating capital. However, on-chain activity remains extremely soft, with little signal of new interest in the asset outside the existing hodler base. That said, the hodlers who remain appear to be willing to double down as price falls and remain unwilling to spend coins even if held at a loss. Only the, holder, only the hodlers remain. Over the recent months, we have highlighted the low on-chain activity for Bitcoin remains both lackluster and stable. This is a typical characteristic of past bear markets where the transition activity of the network is dominated by the hodler class who are far more price and insensitive, meaning they don't care what happens to the price. They want their Bitcoin diamond hands. After the May 2021 sell off, we witnessed a modest purge of wallets as investors completely emptied out their coin holdings. This was followed by a four month long plateau in wallet growth as uncertainty crept into investor psychology and marginal buyers were flushed out by the market uh, out of the market by the down the drawdown as we can see in the chart below the poor price performance of the late has put wallet growth on a near-term pause although not on the same scale as in may of 2021 during high volatility events like the luna inspired sell-off we often see an uptick in on-chain activity as investors panic sell or otherwise move coins to post margin and cover positions in march 2020 and november 2018 this upswing in activity post sell-off initiated, uh, post initiated the subsequent bull runs. While this possibility cannot be ruled out, we can see that both active addresses and entities have given back all of this upswing in activity and returned to the range established 
since September of 2021. In other words, the recent sell-off in lower prices has not yet inspired an influx of new users to the space and only hodlers remain. A shift in accumulation behavior. Of course, on-chain activity is only part of the story. While wallet growth and active entities may be stagnant, this analysis does not account for the economic value of the investors and wallets that remain. As prices correct, lower the ability for hodlers to acquire more BTC per dollar increases, which leads, to, uh, leads us to investigate the domain of supply dynamics. The accumulation trend score has been a noteworthy shift in behavior. For almost two weeks, it has returned near perfect score of above 0.9. This indicates that existing entities on the network are adding significantly to their holdings. This is a clear break from the intermittent scores returned during the January through April cons consolidation range in orange, which can reasonably be classified as relatively low conviction accumulation. Previous instances of sustained high accumulation trend scores fall into two buckets or categories. The high score during the bull run in blue, which usually occur near tops as the smart money distribute their balance, but are matched with a high, even larger influx of less experienced new buyers. And then there's high scores during bearish trends in green, which generally trigger after very significant corrections in price as investor psychology shifts from uncertainty to value accumulation. A notable exception in, is the post all time high period of December 2021 where the dip turned out to be uh, turned out to not be the dip, and many of these coins were redistributed at lower at a loss. If we dissect the various wallet cohorts uh, whom are contributing to this high accumulation score, we can identify two particular groups: entities with less than 100 BTC and entities with greater than 10,000 BTC. Inspecting the former, we can see that the gradient of their aggregate wallet holdings increased following the recent sell-off. Furthermore, the aggregate balance of this core has increased by 80,724 BTC, remarkably similar to the net 80,081 BTC liquidated by the Luna Foundation Guard. Click on the details here if you want to follow this article. In effect, the increased demand for them less than 100 BTC entities at lower prices has offset in the supply liquidated by the LFG, which is the Luna Foundation Guard, in the attempt to defend the UST peg, which has contributed to the high accumulation trend score are whales with over 10,000 BTC holdings. Over the course of May, these entities have added 4, 46,296 BTC to their balance, and note that this includes the distribution of 80,000 BTC from the LFG wallet. These observations can be largely confirmed by inspection of the, uh, the accumulation trend score breakdown by wallet cohorts metric. Here we can see that since the sell-off, entities holding less than 100 Bitcoin and over 10,000 Bitcoin have returned blue signals, indicating a significant increase to their balance in recent weeks. This is a notable shift from the relatively weak values, the yellow red, during the lead up to the sell off, with whales in particular being large scale distributors sell offs. The remaining wallet cohorts with 100 to 10,000 BTC have uh, maintained a more neutral rating around 0.5, suggesting relatively little net change to their holdings. In the next section, we will investigate the behavior of long term holders to further refine our observations. We have now established a case for the various wallet size cohorts that participated in recent accumulation on chain. Next, we turn to the long term holders, whom represent the least likely to spend during volatility to gauge investor con uh, con conviction. Note that the transition into long term holder status is approximately 155 days ago which is located in late December when prices were at approximately 47,000. If we take a look at the URPD metric on April 1st, 2022, prior to the Luna sell-off, we can map out the coin distribution profile with a focus on the 2021 to 2022 cycle. We now bring this April 1st profile and overlay it with today's URPD in blue 
below. From this, we can assess the change in coin distribution and make the following observations. A sizable reallocation of 1.5 million BTC has occurred from buyers largely in the 42,000 to 49,000 range down to buyers in the current range of 26.7 thousand to 33k. The coin distribution elsewhere remains remarkably similar to the April 1st profile, suggesting the relatively price insensitive hodlers cohort continue to dominate the Bitcoin investor profile. The current downtrend in coins younger than three months support this observation. Looking back three months captures all coins last spent over uh, after March 1st, which is the middle of last consolidation range when a downtrend in three month old hodl waves is in effect. It means that on a net, coin supply is migrating up to more senior age bands, longer holds. The key takeaway from these two metrics is that the coin holders who accumulated after the November all time high appear to be relatively price insensitive, despite continued drawdowns in price and a major spot liquidation event in the 80 of 80,000 uh, BTC, they remain unwilling to let go of their coins. Recalling that the long term holder threshold is located in late December, it is no surprise that the total long term holder supply has, pl has pl plateaued as of late. For the last few months, the long term holder threshold was traversing along the downtrend that was in play from November to January. Typically, supply accumulation occurs during sideways price ranges. This means that in around one month time, the long-term holder threshold will enter the previous consolidation range established between 33K and 42K. Based on the URPD profile, a very large volume of supply was acquired here between April or January and April. Long-term holder supply has recently returned to the all-time high of 13.048 million BTC. Unless significant coin distribution redistribution occurs, we can therefore expect this supply metric to commence climbing over the course of the next three to four months, suggesting hodlers continue to gradually soak up and hold on to supply. However, despite the constructive forward view, there remains a subset of long-term holders who are currently spending coins and realizing losses. The long-term holders SOPR metric can be viewed as the average profit multiple realized by long-term holder cohort each day and it rarely trades below 1.0. This week, we have seen an average long-term holder spent coin locking in at 27% loss compared to the point of coin acquisition. Such events in the past have only occurred during the final capitulation lows of bear markets, such as 2015 and 2018, and briefly in March of 2020. This is the 2015 drop-off, the 2018 drop-off, tiny bit in March of 2020 with the COVID drop and this is us now. With the concept of long-term holder SOPR as a realized profit multiple, we can thus derive that the average price from where the long-term holder spent coins are coming from termed the spent price. This long-term holder spent price in pink rarely trades below or sorry, rarely trades above the market price but however is currently trading at 32,800 uh, on a seven day moving average basis. The last time long-term holders locked in losses like this was briefly following the March 2020 sell-off. In the case of the 2018 bark, uh, bear market, this preceded many months of long-term holder losses and culminated an additional 50% price decline. The plateauing on-chain activity for Bitcoin has been in effect since September of 2021 and as yet, there are few signs of this changing course. What this indicates is that the hodlers class, the hodler class, the Bitcoin buyers of last resort and the only ones that remain, this can only be observed in the unwillingness to spend held supply, even if it is now held at a loss. A notable shift occurred in on-chain accumulation trends following the Luna induced sell-off. Entities with less than 100 BTC appear to have soaked up an equivalent coin volume to that sold in distress by the Luna Foundation Guard. Alongside a majority of long-term holders, an increasingly large volume of BTC appears hodled and acquired at these lower prices. This trend, unless disrupted, 
can be expected to propel long-term holder supply above its all-time high over the coming months. Keeping both eyes on the macro environment, which Bitcoin remains within, there are signals of a decoupling between digital assets and equities in the traditional markets. Whether renewed correlation returns remains to be seen, and as does the ultimate direction of markets in reaction to monetary tightening. Risks of a significant scale remain, however impressively, so does the population of price-insensitive Bitcoin hodlers. What do you think about this? Please, I would love to hear what you got to say. There's a wonderful article by Arthur Hayes he just put out recently and putting it all down to fuel and food and the wealthy. Will they keep buying? Will it keep creating that, that demand in the market for fuel and food because that seems to be the only way that the central banks are going to win in this tightening of fiscal policy and if the very wealthy don't stop spending for fuel and food then it's not going to work and they're just going to start printing again and then boom there we off to the races so please again thank you so much for listening for watching be sure to follow over on over on odyssey again hit that like button if you really enjoyed this again politely leave me a comment down below and follow me on twitch and twitter all right everybody thank you again love you all take care peace